Hello and welcome to lesson four of my Swift tutorial for beginners. Now in the previous lesson, you learned about how you can use the if statement to run code based on some conditions. Now sometimes when you really get into coding, you might find yourself ending up with a giant if statement with so many branches that it's gonna give you a headache. When you see yourself going down this path, I want you to stop and consider using a switch statement. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use that. So the first thing I wanna mention is that there is a Swift programming language guide. And I probably should have mentioned this in lesson one, uh, but better late than never. I'll add the link to this guy in the description below the video. Now this contains um, kind of a walkthrough of the language. Actually, it's more in depth than that. Um, it is basically everything you'd wanna know about the Swift programming language. However, it is quite a lengthy read but if reading is your thing, then I would highly recommend that you go through it. Um, especially if you come from another programming language, um, it's gonna be very useful for you to skim through it, see how the structure of the language is, the syntax. Um, but if you are an absolute beginner to coding, if you never coded before, this is your first exposure to it, then you might get a little bit confused. Um, however, it's still a great reference in complement to what you're learning here in the video lessons. So definitely check it out. So I just wanted to point out uh, where we are. Now I'm not following the exact order that they have listed out here because um, I feel like the way that they have laid it out is a very slow buildup until you can actually start using the language and having fun with it and building things. And so the way that I've laid out this lesson plan for you in this video series, you can um, be, ve it's very practical and you can start coding and start tinkering and having fun sooner. So uh, I just wanna show you where you would find some of the lessons that we've gone through. So if in the previous lesson, we talked about if statements, that's under control flow. And there's also this little drop down here. So if you pull this guy down, you can jump to different sections. So we are at conditional statements right here. So you can see the if statement um, gives you a couple of examples. So it's, you know, it's really good supplementary material to what we've covered. Um, but in today's topic, I wanna to talk to you about the switch statement, which is right here. So I just want uh, for you to take a look at the syntax here. You'll notice that there is the switch keyword here, and then there is some value to consider, and then a set of braces, and inside there's these case and these default keywords. You know what, I'm gonna show you how it's used inside of a playground, and I'm gonna use an example. So you know, it's gonna be a lot easier to understand. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's pop open Xcode here. Let's get started with the playground. And I am just going to switch playground and let's save this on the desktop. Let's just minimize this guy to avoid distraction. All right, so I'm gonna declare a new constant here and let's say that this is a character uh, so why don't we call this A? And we are going to assign it, uh, we'll assign it A. Let's call it character, let's call it CHR. Now if I wanted to test this constant and see if it was equal to A, I could do something like this. If CHR is, remember we use double equal sign for equality, testing equality I mean. You know, I could print. Uh, the character is A. And then if I wanted to go through all of the letters of the alphabet, I could do else if, you know, you get the picture, right? It would be a giant if statement, not recommended. But this is where the switch statement would come in handy. So why don't we just quickly take a look at the syntax. So just like you saw in the language guide, you start with the switch keyword, then followed by the thing that you wanna check. In our example in the playground, that was the constant named CHR. And then you open up a set of braces, and then inside the braces, you put all of the things that you wanna check for. And each thing that you wanna check for is preceded by the case keyword. So it would be case, whatever you wanna check for first, followed by colon, and then the code that you wanna execute, if that case is true, followed by the next case, and so on and so forth. And at the very bottom, you have a default case for when none of the cases match, it's going to hit the default case and run your code there. Now let's jump back to the playground and see this in action. 
So let's erase this if statement and instead use a switch statement. So we're gonna say switch, and actually you can use autocomplete and you can just press enter like that and it's gonna come up with all of the cases for you. Or you could type it out for practice. So you can see immediately it, it's come up with this syntax for me, which is really handy because I can actually hit tab on my keyboard and jump through the different things that I have to fill in. Well, I guess it stops right there. Let's change the value for CHR. And the pattern that I wanna check for, you know, the first case would be A, right? And the code that I wanna put here would be, um, this is an A, right? And then default might be, this is the fallback. So let's run this code and see what happens. So as expected, it hits this case and it prints an A. Now, what if we wanted to check for something else? Let's say B, print, this is a B. And if we just change that to a B and then we run it again, you'll see that it skips this case and it comes down here and prints this instead. Now, one additional cool thing I wanna show you is that you can actually combine cases. So let's say for cases B and C, I wanna execute the same block of code. So I wanna say this is, uh, this is a B or C. So I would just put a comma here and I can put the other thing that I wanna check for. So if CHR is a B or a C, then this code is gonna be executed. And so as expected, it jumps down here. So this is pretty much it for a switch statement. It's pretty easy to use, to be honest. And it's a lot easier to read than a giant if statement. Wouldn't you agree? Now to get more practice using switch statements, I highly recommend that you get the worksheet. Just hop on over to the resources page for this video series to download it. If you liked this lesson, please hit subscribe and the thumbs up button below. I really appreciate it and it really encourages me to keep going. All right, we're starting to really get into the exciting stuff. So go on and click over to the next lesson and I'll see you there.